Casey's Audio Vault. Ian Blurton of Come On. April 3rd, 2008. How are you enjoying this tour? It's been amazing, actually. I haven't had any bad shows at all yet, so no complaints. What's the number? How many times have you been across this fair country? Uh, I'm thinking like 35, 37, somewhere in that range. Still loving every minute of it? Loving every second of it. Have you got a different setup this time around, or is it usually just the, the Econoline with a trailer? Or? Uh, we don't use trailers because trailers are nasty. Well, I was in a van once where the trailer hit black ice and pulled the van into the ditch, so kind of gun-shy around trailers. But, yeah, we just jam all our amps into the our van and roll down the highway. Have you uh, been busy producing any uh, records lately? Uh, I just finished a record by a band from Toronto called Drunkula. Trying not to work too hard, you know, I'm semi-retired. Semi-retired as, as a producer? Yeah, yeah. Any other bands that we should be looking out for in Toronto area? Uh, oh my gosh. My, I mean, I love Quest for Fire. Um, there's a new Cursed album that's uh, amazing. Jeez, I don't know. There's lots of great bands. The Mercy Now, uh, Rammer. Do you, do you still feel like you're doing exactly what you want to do, or is there something, is there a next level for, come on? Well, arenas would be the next level for us. Yeah, you want to play arenas? <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Small arenas. Minor hockey league arenas only. No NHL arenas. We have an embargo on NHL arenas, but small arenas is our next step. Yeah. We're all really happy doing what we're doing. Do you get frustrated thinking about some uh, bands that you like, you appreciate, that don't necessarily get the notoriety that you feel they deserve? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my favorite bands in history are like that. I mean, even, you know, take a band like Motorhead, you kinda, they don't really get the respect that they deserve considering they opened up the world to, you know, super fast metal. But, yeah, I mean, uh, almost all my favorite bands are underdog bands anyway, so it's not like it's something new to me, you know? Have you come across any any of them that are, are kind of bitter about the whole thing? Like, two of my favorite bands, the Helicopters and the Super Suckers, and it seems like they've done almost everything right, but still not many people, if you take an odd person off the street, know who they are. Yeah, there's absolutely no way they're going to know who they are. Maybe the Super Suckers more so. But yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Helicopters, obviously, this is their last record and they're breaking up. So there must be some bitterness on, on their part. I think trying to break the, trying to spend your life trying to break the States must be a, a really hard thing to do, you know? Last time they played uh, played the States, the Helicopters, that is, I ran into them and they're like, we lose money. Every time we come across the ocean, we lose money. And they said, can't even think of why we would do this again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can understand that. It's hard to get across the across the ocean for sure, you know, and uh, it's too bad because the helicopters are, you know, they're one of my favorite bands too, and I think they deserve more. I mean, they've, they're great songwriters. They're a really good band. I found it sort of odd that they would announce that they're breaking up and then announce that they're going to have a tour and a record. Yeah. Does that seem a little bit strange to you? It's just like one last kick of the can, we're going to make it way, make our way through this, and then one well, year... Well, maybe it's because, I mean, like, Death Breath had already started, like, Nikki's new band, right? Yep. So maybe they just didn't want people thinking that he's going to run two bands at the same time, like, you know, I don't know. I don't know why he would do it that way. But it's sad. Hopefully it's a good helicopter's record. Yeah, yeah well, the last one was yeah. pretty good. The last one was my least favorite one so far. Um, well, let's go back to your band. Um, you gotta... No, let's talk about other bands. Yeah, you want to keep talking about other bands? <laughs> <laughs> how, about, how about Black Moses? How, how come no one ever talks about Black Moses from London, England? I don't, well, I don't know. They're just as good as the helicopters. I'm going to have to write that down. I don't know them. They're really great. You got an MP3 player in, in the, the van? Blasting. No, but we have two cassette decks. Yeah? Yeah. MP3, wasn't that the robot on Star Wars? <laughs> you don't really embrace the the technology, do you? You don't you don't make any music videos, and you got a pretty sparse oh. website. Yeah, we hate that stuff. Why do you hate that stuff? Well, it's just like it takes away from you know being a band. Like, I mean, we we spend so much time, you know, we we spend time doing other things, you know, like actually making music and booking our own tours and playing shows and stuff. There's so much so much time in the, in a day, and if it starts getting spread too thin, I mean, you're gonna something's gonna break what's your favorite club to play you know what uh we really like all the clubs that we're playing on this tour they're all really great to us i mean we love the royal albert you know we love sam do you hear that um, it was kind of kind of close to closing down yeah oh yeah yeah 
And then actually the funny thing was when they interviewed the dude on CBC, he was wearing a Come On shirt. So we got, uh, that's, see, that's why we don't have to make, that's why we don't have to make videos and commercials is we have people doing it for us. <laughs> You've got devoted fans. In the fans. most subtle possible way. Uh, are you, uh, writing more stuff? Do you have a, a date for a new record at all? Or are you not thinking about that quite yet? We're doing, uh, we're trying to do five, seven inches this year. And then we're going to put those out on a comp at the end of the year and then a new album, hopefully ne- early next year. And I guess this the the show at the Albert on Saturday with the Hot Live guys. You got to split seven inch with them. How how did you hook yep. up with them? Uh, we've been playing with them for years. I mean, uh, everyone in the band absolutely adores them. I think they're a great band. I mean, awesome live show, great songs, and uh, we're just honored to be able to do something like this with them finally. And also, I mean, have two two Winnipeg labels, you know, come together too. I mean. War on Music and Transistor 66 coming together and joining forces to help put it out. I think it's great. And I see that one of the upcoming seven inches, you got a uh, cheap trick cover, Southern Girls. Yep, yep. Are you going to plan on doing any more covers? Do you, do you usually pull them yeah, out for we're, the Yeah, uh, we did a Guided by Voices cover, and we did a uh, Demix cover, which is a London, Ontario punk rock band. I don't know. I'm sure there'll be some other covers down the road. We just recorded two new songs, too, in Victoria like three days ago. Do you generally record in your own studio, or uh, what? You got? No, this was actually in a little house in Victoria. Yeah, it turned out great. The latest record, uh, Bottle Lightning, is that one in in your studio? Yeah, I, I I I don't have any ownership in the studio anymore. I sold out, but yeah, it's like uh, I totally sold out, dude, on that one. <laughs> um, it's still the same studio though that I used to. Yeah, I was heard a story. It was. Um... It's true. Well, it's funny because there's. <laughs> Uh, a guy used to work here at Power 97, Leek, who is now on uh, on uh, one of the satellite stations, and he told me a story about uh, you walking out of a coffee shop with a cup of coffee, and somebody walked by and dropped change in it because you kind of have a hobo beard. Is that is that? Uh, Damn you, Jeff Leek! Is so that's a story. That's a real story. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I was actually standing at a bus stop. <laughs> Was it a regular type coffee, or was it like a mocha Americana latte? No, it was a it was a doppio espresso with a dash of cold milk. You can be fancy. Oh, I am so fancy in my own way. <laughs> How long have you been rocking that beard? Uh, about seven years. It's a full commitment. It's you're you're married to it. Oh, it's a commitment. Yeah. Well, here at the station, a couple of us are having a, a bit of a beard growing competition. I've been about two months in, and it's. It's hard, frankly. I can't wait to shave it on Friday or on Saturday. Yeah, well, you get past the you get past the itchy point, and then you just don't notice it anymore. Uh, your better half enjoys it as well. She what? She doesn't mind it. Not at all. She's yeah. never even seen me without a beard. Actually, she might be frightened. Yeah, she she might not even love me anymore. <laughs> How did you guys hook up? She she used to be in uh, in Natural Pussy amongst other bands. We were on a tour in uh, Vancouver. Bionic, a band I used to be in, right. and uh, we were opening for Nashville Pussy, and we blew them off the stage, and uh, they got her to come and talk to us to tone down our show <laughs> so that we wouldn't blow them off the stage every night, and then we fell in love. That's that's a romantic story. Isn't it romantic? It is. And it was at the Commodore Ballroom. I'm really looking forward to the show. It's uh, It's been a couple years since I've seen you guys play, uh, I think it was nice. the, the zoo the last time. Nice. Is it true that you changed your vacation around or something? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm visiting a friend in Korea next week, and uh, nice. my flight was supposed to leave on Saturday, but I changed it to Sunday. So I'll be... Sunday uh, morning? Sunday morning. Wow. Okay, so we're going to drink with you all night until you're playing. And then you're going to go to Korea, and we're going to go to Thunder Bay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's probably a pretty good idea, yeah, because I need to get, to get to the airport by 4, and your show probably won't end until 2. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm glad I get you on the phone, Ian. I appreciate it. Oh, thanks uh, for having us. And uh, just, you know, everyone come out and have a great time on Saturday. I mean, all the bands are great. I'm not even talking about us, but Starving Hungry from Montreal are on the tour with us, and they're awesome. Hot Live guys are great. Okay, well, I look forward to meeting you, and I'll see you uh, on Saturday night. Great. Thanks a lot. All the interviews you want on iTunes and at Power97.com. Casey's Audio Vault. Casey Norman is Power97's music director and can be heard every weekday from 2 till 6 in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Power97 is Winnipeg's best rock.